Hi, gang. Hey, guess who's got his invite for the royal wedding? <laughs> Only me. Let's see. What are we going to have? Oh, prawns as a starter. Then beef madras. Not for me. I'll probably just fill up on bread. Mm. Then for afters, two whole Viennettas to go round. I hope I'm sitting near the freezer for that. Also says... There's a live performance by a hot chocolate tribute band. They're called <laughs> Lukewarm Chocolate. Unfortunately, they're all white, but it says they do do the voices quite well. Oh, stop. Um, <laughs> then it's uh, 70s themed disco and a late bar. Hang on, it says cash bar. Bit stingy, in it? I know for a fact this bloke's dad's got a few <laughs> quid. Do you know what? I don't think I'll go. Welcome to News Thing. It's Saturday night, and we're almost live from London, like we're still a fucking black or something. Yes, it's the UK's longest running and least shit satirical show. It's Sam Delaney's News Thing. By appointment to Her Majesty the Queen, application pending. Pretending to be down with the kids this week, constantly saying things are lit, it's Louisa Zisman. Hashtagging about Stormzy's latest drop, it's India Willoughby. And going up to her room in a huff because I hate you, Mom, and Gary's not my real dad, it's London Hughes. And our special guest, he hit the headlines when his 100 grand watch was stolen, it's Simon Jordan. Although he may not be here on time. <laughs> You're right, it's going to be a great show. Hello and welcome to San Delaney's News Thing. This week came the long-awaited sequel to one of the greatest British moments of all time. It was the summer of 16 and Britain was feverish with excitement in the lead-up to the Brexit referendum. Cast your mind back to that glorious hot day after we'd all had a bit too much to drink. All that passion and excitement erupted in a stirring display of democracy at its very best. I'm talking... Of course, about the Brexit flotilla. 30 or so fishing boats sailing up to Westminster, led by UKIP leader Nigel Farage. But Remain had been tipped off, outswept a counterforce. Little boats and large, under Admiral Sir Bob Geldof. Nigel! Nigel! You're a fraud! <laughs> magical, magical stuff. Uh, then this week came what we'd all been waiting for, the big sequel. Go a few miles down the river and you will see every day thornback rays in abundance being chucked back to rot on the seabed. The whole thing is a disaster. <laughs> I'll be honest, that was a fucking disappointment. <laughs> Only one of the original cast and the whole thing was just a bit... Perplexing. I mean, I haven't been this disappointed by a sequel since the Smurfs, the legend of Smurfy Hollow, full of plot holes and a slap in the face to anyone who, like me, has invested in the Smurf canon. Anyway, this event was staged in order to protest against the recently announced EU transition agreement in which Britain was told they'll have to abide by existing EU fishing quotas for the full 21 months the Brexit implementation period lasts. Sounds fair, right? Wrong! You hate Britain. Listen, lads, don't worry too much about the fish. Last time I checked, Tesco was full of the stuff. Jacob Rees-Mogg was at the protest too, watching the proceedings from the riverbank like something from a terrible live-action <laughs> Wind in the Willows remake. But Rees-Mogg said he actually disagreed with Farage throwing fish into the river. After all, you've got poor, hungry families all over Britain. Why can't they be thrown into the river instead? <laughs> <laughs> Not Rees-Mogg's joke, mine. Anyway, the whole thing was a perfect display of how petty and impossible to please the hard Brexit fringe really are. If they don't get exactly what they want, like a stroppy teenager, they fly into a tantrum and start throwing dead fish everywhere. Ugh, two years, that's ages. I hope you're all dead by then. Have that. Panel, I think the most sickening part of all this is that those fish puns they've been doing on the news, like, mm. oh, my cod, or I hate Brexit, it's terrible, isn't it, Louisa? Terrible. Is There's a time funny? and a place for throwing dead fish. Oh, there is, and for fish bun. Oh, a time and a place. Time and a place. Uh, oh. Did you miss it? Come I on. fucking missed oh. it. Oh. Oh. My head's gone. It's a time and place. Well done, hun. Um, it was hilarious. Yeah. I think Nigel, but he's not even an MP. Yeah, no. why is he he's here? He's just clinging on. Mm. But this is only temporary, because then 
we're going to be out and then we can fish as much as we want. But exactly. Well, you tell that to Farage really... and his mates because, He's you know, like... they're just impatient, aren't yeah, they, but India? Yeah, I do have a little bit of sympathy for Nigel. I think oh. there, there is a point. If you're catching fish mm. and they do have to be thrown overboard because the EU says so. I think that's nonsense. And for Bob Geldof mm. to get involved... Well, let's not go back yeah. to that. You're yeah. a fraud, Nigel. Yeah. He wanted to feed starving people, and there he is, supporting an organisation that's chucking fish, perfectly good fish, chucking away. Chucking dead fish it's into dead our fish. own river to make a point yeah. against the EU it's is a perfect allegory for Brexit, isn't it? Exactly. It's a perfect cut your nose off to spite your face kind of an issue. So what do you why think, Why would London? you go into Nigel for anything? He's not no one. Why, mm. what, who is, why is he an authority on it's anything? An why is he trying to make it a thing? thing? You're not a thing. No. He's nothing now. Did you hear See, all this hoo-ha about the passports? People want blue passports no one again. Cares. I don't know why. And they're being I'm made really in France. I'm really annoyed about the passports. Why? Because we've taken it from a British company and given it to mm. a French company. There's an irony in that, isn't and, there? And even worse, the British company that makes the passports is called Delarue. It's a British company that's got a French name. Yeah. I thought it just that. so confusing. But... They're going to go back to being blue. They've been made in France. That's what people are annoyed by. Because they think, some people who voted Brexit think that what your passport looks like is a very important expression of national identity. Of course, those people are stupid. A lot of people submitted designs for what the new British passport should be. Um, there was a contest. The one that got rejected, which I actually thought was quite good, was this, which UKIP themselves did. Just imagine yourself, you're on your holidays post-Brexit, you've flown into Magaluf, right? The moody Spanish customs guy, passport control, passport, passport. You give it to him, right? He opens it up and all of a sudden, <gasps> ay, ay, ay! Oh, wow. yeah, I and you're that. like, have some of that, Pedro, <laughs> up yours. Oh. And I think that would have been a very nice response to Brexit, but it got rejected. I don't oh, know really? why. We I haven't got any balls in this country I anymore, have we? <laughs> Thanks, panel. Uh, right, now a lot of people think that fishing is a modern trend, like fidget spinners or Stormzy, but actually, Fishing's been around for years. As far back as 1973, when we joined the EEC, as it was known then, debate was raging around this whole common fisheries business, prompting the government to introduce this informational film, narrated by Mr Sid James. What about my fish? Ah, fish, the sausages of the sea. Now that we're on the continent, you've probably heard a load of rubbish about how all our fish is going to swim straight off to Magamuf. And who could blame them? <laughs> See, we all love a British fish. Cods, kippers, winkles, crikey. I never knew that was a fish. <laughs> it takes all sorts, don't it? But thanks to our new European mates, we'll have an old new class of fish swimming up the Thames. Turbot, mullet, monkfish, octopus and all covered in lovely garlic and fancy French wine like they do on the continent. Blimey, we'll be living like kings. There's even something called a kingfish, what it says here, swims around in schools. God, I'm glad we never had that in my school. I never have got me math certificate with that lot splashing about. Of course, with all that lovely fish, there'll have to be some rules to stop anyone trying to hog the whole lot. Next time you catch a few too many mackerel, do the responsible thing and sling them back in the drink. That leaves a bit for our continental friends, see? And it means that Jack the fish here has a cracking story to tell his missus. If she'll ever let him get a bleeding word in edgeways. See, if we don't all play fair, there won't be any fish left in the whole of Europe. And then where will we go for our fish supper? Africa? Mind you, might not be so bad. <laughs> All right, love. Had any luck? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's a wrong. God. Fascinating <laughs> stuff. Now, this week, the Daily Mail serialised this book, which I have here. Tom Bower's uh, book called Rebel Prince, which details what the paper called the breathtakingly indulgent life of Prince Charles. Boa interviewed 120 Clarence House insiders for the first comprehensive picture of Prince Charles's real life. It's a sensational expose of a man who is as in touch and in tune with ordinary life in Britain today as P. Diddy or Kanye West. I'm just going to read out the best bits, which I will justify as entertainment simply by occasionally raising a wry eyebrow at the end of each segment, like so. <laughs> Camilla Parker Bowles, who the book claims the Queen hates, 
is depicted as one of the most astonishingly lazy shits in human history. <laughs> with one of her family describing her as the laziest woman to have been born in England in the 20th century. Meanwhile, Princess Diana said Charles only fell for Camilla because Charles is obsessed by Camilla's tits. And I haven't got tits as big as Camilla's. Oh, Charles, you old dog. Camilla, meanwhile, is said to have unflattering cartoons of Diana framed all over the walls of her downstairs lavvy. No. Now, Charles and Camilla got married on the same day as the Grand National. Now, the Queen obviously loves the GGs, and she had no interest in the wedding because, according to Boa, she thought Camilla was a gold digger, something she told Charles after several martinis. Even though she'd already seen the Grand National that day on the telly, Her Majesty left the royal wedding early because she wanted to watch it again on video. But a courtier fucked up the buttons and didn't record it, and the Queen was absolutely fucking livid. Well, fair play, ma'am. <laughs> Once Charles stayed over with a posh mate in the northeast of England, but he wasn't willing to stay in a guest room, so he sent a truck over the day before to his mate's house, which contained his entire bedroom from home, including his orthopaedic bed, his own linen, a small radio, his own lavatory seat, rolls of Kleenex premium comfort lavatory paper and special posh whiskey, bottled water, plus two landscapes of the Scottish Highlands. So he had something <laughs> nice to look at while he was on his makeshift pop-up posh lavvy. But the absolute best bit in the book, I think, is when Prince Charles once came back from the theatre to Highgrove and after a martini, he went into the kitchen to look what his staff had left out for him to eat. And when he walked in there, he shrieked with fear. Ah! So Camilla came running in to find out what the matter was and he was pointing at the food going, what the hell is this? And the plates were covered in cling film, which he claimed to have never seen before and was consequently terrified of. Prince Charles is 69 years old. Panel, can I ask you, for some reason, <laughs> if you had never seen Ping Film before, yeah. India, you must admit, it might be strange. If you'd got to that age and you'd never yeah. seen Ping Film and suddenly you saw it laying over your plates of salad and cold cuts, you might think, what the fucking hell's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's a new ghost. But let, let, let's yeah. just take some perspective here. He's not going to have to wrap his sandwiches or his leftovers so guys, up really in Tupperware. I love Prince him. Charles. I suspect you have a lifestyle somewhat similar to Prince Charles. Yeah, I don't take my own orthopedic bed, but honestly, I'm like <laughs> inspired by this. Mm. London, do you live a life like that? Would you like to? I'm classy. Yeah. I'm like broke with yes, expenses. I'm classy from Croydon. Yeah. No, I'm Croydon classy. <laughs> Listen, I don't do buses because buses are beneath me. Yeah. But I am. Um, you know what I mean? I, I make my own money, so I work as mm. hard and I play harder. Yeah. But I love Prince Charles. Like I've actually met him, and he <laughs> told me that I was too pretty to be a comedian. Is so, that what he said? I literally oh. have nothing bad to say about. So Charles he Lee. bought your loyalty with his empty flattery. You no, are I a actually... very superficial person. No, I'm not. Do you think he used those sort of lines on Camilla? Yeah, because he told Camilla he wishes he was a tampon so he was inside it. Oh, no. no he that, did that, not. Yes, he did. That's, he did, very, he that's did, a very famous he did, thing. He, he did, did. He did. He did is, say that. Yes. Do you no. think that's good sexy talk? Yes. Because I, I don't think it is at all. I think for a 69-year-old man, you've got game. Well done, babe. Like, my granddad couldn't be dropping them lines on my grandma That's not a good line, London. For 69, that's a great line. Well, it's not a sexy thing to imagine. Being a sanitary product, is it? Prince Charles and Camilla having sex is like your mum and dad doing it. Yeah, I don't believe they have sex. I imagine my mum and dad being fantastic lovers and putting on a real spectacle. So that doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah. Thanks, panel. Time for a break now, but very soon I'll be meeting businessman Simon Jordan, a man who had his hundred grand watch stolen off his wrist this week. Let's hope the culprit serves time. <laughs> Thanks to my nine-year-old nephew, Andrew, for that excellent joke. Let's hope that stops the bullying, Andrew. <laughs> uh, also, there'll be another slice of Westminster whispers from our old mate, Jacob Rees-Mogg. See you in a tick. <laughs>
I had veal for lunch and you remind me of that. Pink, delicious and worryingly young. <laughs> now pin them back. What's this I hear about the fish quotas post-Brexit? Let me make it clear. I will do anything to make sure our nation's fishermen are given all the relief they need. Oh, yeah, I like all the fish. Cod, haddock, whiting. Nice bit of place. And I've got a nice place where you can overfish with your rod, if you get my meaning. <laughs> yes! Nothing excites me more than the thought of a load of old hairy British fishermen joyfully discharging their quota all over my boat. <laughs> it's rhyming slang, dear. You wouldn't get it unless you're six foot four and a sailor. But I know someone else who loves fish. Jesus. And his dad makes it clear. Those men who have sex with men will not inherit the kingdom of God. Corinthians 6, 9. God almighty, you might say. Until next time, keep your powder dry and everything else wet. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> uh, what a horrible man. Welcome back, by the way. Now, there was a journalistic coup this week as a joint investigation by The Observer and Channel 4 News and The New York Times exposed political consulting firm Cambridge Analytica as a dark, corrupting influence on democracies across the globe. The reports revealed that this company has been harvesting people's data via Facebook and using it to manipulate our political opinions and influence elections, including the 2016 US presidential election and, allegedly, our own Brexit vote. How did they do this? Well, one way is through those daft personality tests you get on Facebook. You know, the ones that ask silly questions like who's your favourite backstreet boy or what's your favourite sauce at Nando's? And then they use your answers to basically establish your emotional and psychological essence as a human. Honestly, you wonder why Freud and Jung and all that lot even fucking bothered. Seems like just a bit of fun, all this, doesn't it? Only it's not fun at all. It is sinister and manipulative because... This company, Cambridge Analytica, have been secretly taking your answers and examining them in a lab to gain insights into your deepest, darkest hopes and fears, and then using that info to communicate political messages to you. Like in that shop in Minority Report, only they're not selling your jeans, they're selling your Donald Trump, <laughs> mind you. If you think that's sinister, this is the inside of their office, as revealed by Channel 4's undercover filming. I mean, what are those massive jars of liquid <laughs> all sorts all about? Imagine popping one of them all innocent-like, then waking up eight hours later in the back of an Uber with no memory, noticing your trousers are on the wrong way round, and there's fresh stitches around where your kidneys used to be. Chilling stuff, isn't it? Or is it? I mean, they used to do this stuff by setting up focus groups and paying everyone in free pizza. Now, data mining companies like Cambridge Analytica are doing the same thing, but on a much bigger scale. And rather than being lured in with free pizza, people just give out the inner workings of their soul for free, motivated by the fact that they're just bored and have ten minutes to kill on a bus journey. So who are any of us to complain when the information we willingly gave up is reflected back to us in our Facebook feed? These targeted ads are merely ghastly reflections of our true selves. It's like a restaurant. I mean, you don't walk in and just eat whatever the waiter gives you, do you? You've already made your choice. It's just that you accidentally, in this case, ordered Brexit, not realising that's what you secretly wanted. How did Cambridge Analytica know that's what you really wanted? Because in the part of the questionnaire that asked you what your favourite Backstreet Boy is, you answered anyone but the Muslim. Panel does basically liking a funny cat video ultimately end up with you voting for UKIP? India, I'll start with you because we know you voted Brexit. You do yes. realise you've been manipulated no, by data. I know, I'm not, no, 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 but people are watching. You've only just to join Facebook to see how far the tentacles reach into other organisations that they own oh. and how ads start to follow you around. Yeah. That's a scary it's thing. Horrible. When you just think about, like, yeah. cushions, you mm. then your favourite cushion comes up in a Facebook oh, wait, advert. Wait, 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 people, people, I was thinking about that cushion. People say that's scary. I shut my account but last London, week. London, isn't it a small price to pay, giving away a little bit of your soul to data mining companies, if it means you can continue 
to keep up with old school friends and stalk your exes. To be honest, I probably was that person doing all them little stupid quizzes because yeah. I do you all them quizzes. Like, do. Quizzes. like, do you know what I mean? Like, what, what colour are you? I'm a yeah. red, by the way. Yeah. I, like, I do all the quizzes. <laughs> but, like, I didn't realise they were using my information, so now I'm going to think twice because I'm mm. so vulnerable and gullible. I'll just yeah. be like... Do you, do, so, what do you think? Do you think you might... Have you considered just quitting? I quit. I you quit. quit. Did you? About well, after this? Two weeks ago. No, it had oh. nothing to do with this. Well, you felt vindicated when this story came. I just got pissed off of all With the what? stupid stuff that's on the Facebook. Spam. Yeah, all this right. crap. You know, win a house, give me all your details and we'll put you in a raffle right. and you could end up with a nice semi-detached in Ipswich. I was like, go away, <laughs> I'm really just not interested. Uh, no, exactly. That would be worse than uh, accidentally electing Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah, away, yeah. It? Um, What's the oh. weird shit that you're most embarrassed about? Googling, but nevertheless are prepared to tell me on this television yeah. program. Spellings of stuff before I tweet them. <laughs> okay, so right. I said, I'll tweet Fair something enough. profound oh, and I'll really Google. Cool. You're not embarrassed sure. about that coming out, though, are you? <laughs> to make sure. It's cool to be bad at spelling. No, it's I not. Think. I think it is. It's really not. It really annoys me when people are like, it's you, are uh, not yeah. you. Mm. No, oh, not, yeah. Oh, yeah. They're the fucking real problem. Never mind fucking Cambridge Analytica. Oh, yeah. It's, it's dead. Cambridge. No, you correct your fucking grammar. Like anyone gives a shit. Yeah. No one cares. They're the problem, They are. They're the real problem. Worse than everyone. Thank you, panel. She's coming in strong. Now, Russia staged a brilliant and reckless attack against the Nazis when it attempted the murder of Adolf Hitler on the streets of Salt. Berlin. There was an alfresco ruckus going down over in Madrid as a group of Senegalese dreamers decided to play holy fuck with the patio sets. <laughs> what? The hullabaloo was quenched by El Pigos who hit the dreamers with extendable batons. The batons were then used to put back the furniture. I know everything about you. Good, all right. Funky short arse Jamiroquai was up the town signing passive aggressive autographs. You've done it before, haven't you? Fine. Anybody I've done this morning, can you give it a break, yeah? The space cowboy must have had canned heat in his heels as he fucked off rapid, leaving a poor old sausage hanging in the wind. Not nice, but something else caught my eye. Who's this super fan looking for an autograph? It's only the House of Commons speaker John Burkow. <laughs> Aside from funk music, Burkow also keeps funky company, as seen here beside Keith Vaz at a Leicester City match. Hmm, the same Keith Vaz as who was caught with a funky boy and a liter of poppers. The Burkow spiracy gets deeper. It turns out Burkow isn't Burkow. He's actually Kevin Keegan from 1996 with only a few games left. It was another bitter day out in the West Bank anyway. The Rock Boys were out. The Israelis reprised with some tear bombs as per usual. When's it gonna end? It's beginning to drag on now like, you know. It's like series four of Lost or series five of Sopranos. How have they got time for a cake? So I hope you'll join me in giving him a very warm welcome. I went to see Peter Hitchens get paid to waffle by some students and his jokes were um, terrible. I'm afraid she didn't mention that I also narrowly failed to gain selection to the Olympic team last year for the little known sport of starting an argument in an empty room. <coughs> I argued too much with the selectors. Uh, the, Get off the fucking stage! The simple, the simple, uh, the simple... Your brother was better! World News. Powerful stuff there. Time now for my special guest, uh, one of the country's most high-profile businessmen, uh, former owner of Crystal Palace FC, Mr Simon Jordan, who... Uh, Simon, this week I'm listening to uh, my favourite show on the radio, Eamon Holmes, and I hear you telling him... Eamon, yeah. Um, ..about a truly harrowing experience that occurred this week to you in Croydon. Tell us about it. My father lives in Croydon, and one of the reasons why I bought Crystal Palace Football Club is because he'd played for them as a, as a kid. And Anyway, on the way there, uh, someone comes up beside me on a motorcycle and just says, give me your effing watch. Mm. Uh, so my default reaction is no. So he pulls gun out and puts it in my face and says, uh, I'm going to shoot you in the face. <sighs> for reasons best known to myself, so we'll, we'll go on then. Um, and it, Blimey, and ballsy. It, he's now, if you don't give me this watch, I'm going to shoot you in the effing face, you see. My father gets elevated at this point, and he's, uh, you know, he's like, hold on a second. And at that very moment, I'm suddenly thinking, this, this kid could shoot me, but yeah. more likely, he could shoot me and my father. So 
you know, I hand him over a watch, you know, and, and off he goes into the... Uh, vroom, off he goes, and that was How that. did you feel afterwards? I mean, you're, you're describing it to me in a very cool way. You must have been very shaken up. No. You don't I, go shaken up? You're not traumatised by the experience? No, no, not at all, because it, nothing happened. Uh, it didn't happen to me. Well, well, Simon, I think your response to it's uh, admirable, and I, I would say that if you are in the market for a replacement... <laughs> I've had all these jokes, I've Don't got a wonderful it. Casio. Yeah, mate. £14.99. You've got a stopwatch, an alarm, and a light, which is really handy if I've it's night I've had the John Candy gift being sent to me left, right and centre yeah. from Uncle Buck. Every time yeah. I go to talk sport, I'm asked what the time is. Yeah. I've, got, I've got it going all on. It's do you rather... think London's getting rougher? I do. I think there's a culture and a generation now that attaches no value to life, that are escalating based upon what they think they're entitled to and it's got to be stopped and the police have got to be given the resources to get in front of these people and really put them to book so that they get their minds concentrated about the consequences of their actions. Now you're a big football man, uh, a lot of debate over the last couple of weeks after what happened in Salisbury yeah. about England boycotting the World Cup in yeah. Russia this summer, what's your position on that? I, I don't think politics belongs in a winning sport. I loathe it. I loathe politicians piggybacking off on sport. I loathe moron MPs that know nothing about sport trying to influence the thinking of sports people. You know, sport is very influential. Sport does influence and change people's lives. And I understand the, 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 you know, the gravity of this situation, but there is not, there is not a place for politics in sport. You must have considered politics before. Yeah, very much so, because I think affecting and changing directions of people's lives and being strong and authentic. We live in a country where there isn't authenticity. We live in a country where people don't answer questions. They redirect, they redirect, they redirect. Politics interests me, and holding people to account interests me. So you me might well. fancy it what, on what yeah, side, or maybe you go on your own side? Look, you know, I, in, in my prescriptive outlook towards politics, I have changed my parties based upon the party's policies at the time and the leaders that were in place. Mm. We live in a country where we've got, in America, we've got a, a leader that can't politic and we've got, in this country, we've got a politician that can't lead. Yeah. You know, and I believe that people need to be led and they need strong direction, they need strong motivation. So, either side... I knew it, I knew it, you're a Corbyn man. <laughs> I knew it, I'm I can not... just tell, no, no. Simon. Yeah, yeah, with, with, with his 27% corporation tax. Yeah, I'm right <laughs> out there for Corbyn, yeah. Um, right, on that note, I'm I'm going to end on the following fantastic joke. Simon, do you know what time it is? Time you got a new watch. That's the that's what you're involved in here. That's the level why, of why am I here? that's the level of why, comedy why that here? you are involved in. You're welcome. Thank you, Simon. Stay safe. Thanks also to my panel tonight: Louisa Zisman, India Willoughby, and London Hughes. I'm going home now, and like Prince Charles, I will have this entire studio shipped into my house where I and everyone else here will spend the whole weekend performing the show over and over again to my terrified and confused children. Should be fun. Hope your weekend's as good as mine. Ta-ra.